Hi guys, so today we're going to look at dilations of lines in plane space and on the coordinate plane. So to start, I just want to kind of show you what that's going to look like. So we're starting with this pre-image right here, and here's our center of dilation point O. So that means when we do this dilation, everything's going to get expanded or contracted from O. And we're taking, basically when you want to dilate a line, you're going to take two points on that line, because in order to draw a line, you always need two points. So you have to at least dilate these two points. So if you look over here, so this is after we did the dilation, so this is the image, we still have the center of dilation. Here's your pre-image, and here's the image. Now when you look at this overall, the length of these lines are still going to be the same because remember, lines go on forever. So when you dilate a line, its length is going to be exactly the same. It's still going to go on forever. A couple of things to make note of here is the fact that the segment between the two points I dilated, so segment AB, was double after I did the dilation. A prime B prime is double in length in comparison to AB. Well, and that's because we did a scale factor greater than one according to this um, particular example. So the segment or the distance between the two points on the line will get twice as long, but the overall line itself is going to stay the same length. It'll still go on forever. Another thing to look at is that distance from the center. Remember, we measure everything from the center. So this distance right here from O to A, if I'm doing a dilation of 2, well, that got twice the distance um, from O to A was doubled to get to O to A prime. So again, that distance is still going to get multiplied by that scale factor. And then same thing with OB to OB prime, that distance was twice as long. Um, so that's kind of showing you what it'll look like overall. So the line's still going to look like a line. It's just going to actually get further away from that center. If you're doing a reduction, then what will happen is this distance will get half as big or a third as big, depending on what the scale factor is, which means your line will actually get closer to O, and the distance between the two points you dilate will get smaller. Um, another thing to take a look at here is the fact that these two lines are going to be parallel. Whenever you guys do a dilation, whatever you're dilating will always be parallel. Those segments will always be parallel to each other. So what will happen, or why that will happen, is because whenever you do a dilation, angle measures are preserved. So really, you're creating these angles. We just don't mark the angles. So if you look, OBA, this angle here, when you dilate that angle, it's still going to be the same, creating two congruent angles, because dilations create similar figures. Similar figures have the same shape, so same angle measures, just different size. So these two angles are congruent, and if you look at this in terms of here's your two lines, here's your transversal, well then you have congruent corresponding angles, which implies that these lines must be parallel. So whenever you do a dilation, the lines are going to remain parallel to each other. So that's an important idea here, and it's because of those congruent corresponding angles that you're really copying over. Um, and if you look back yesterday when we saw this, anytime we did a dilation, so let's say B prime, C prime, and BC, they're still parallel. D prime, C prime, and DC were still parallel. The exception to that is when your pre-image point and your image point are the same, then you're going to have a situation where your image is on the same line as the pre-image, so they're not parallel, they're completely co coinciding with each other. Um, if you look at this example here, again, DE, D prime, E prime, parallel. D prime, F prime, and DF, parallel. E prime, F prime, EF, parallel. So you can see that even though these were segments, they're still parallel to each other. So any pre-image segments and image segments are going to be parallel because of those congruent corresponding angles that you're copying over. So now let's actually go through and do some dilation. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to need a compass and a straight edge. We're going to do a dilation of a line in plane space, and you're going to see it's very similar to what we did yesterday. The only difference is we have to remember that lines go on forever, so in the end, the length of my line is going to be the same as the length of this line. What's going to change is the distance in that segment between C and D. So we're doing a dilation using a scale factor of 3 and a center O. So we're going to measure everything from the center O, and we're going to go three times as far. 
So the first thing you want to do, remember, is we want to actually connect our center to each of our pre-image points because remember in the end your image and your pre-image and the center are all collinear. So kind of like up in this picture here, center, pre-image, image, all collinear, all on the same line. So we have to actually connect those so that we know where to place these lines. So really lightly, let's go ahead and do that. So let's extend this out quite a ways because you're getting, you're using a scale factor of three. So I'm just going to do a light line. You can do it dotted if you want or just really lightly. And you know that C prime and D prime have to fall. C prime has to fall on this line. D prime has to fall down here. So now we're going to take our compass and we're going to measure those distances. So we have to measure from O to C. So I'm going to adjust that. And remember, we're going to mark an arc because we're measuring that distance. And then we're going to take our compass and we need to make this distance three times as long. So C prime is going to be three times this distance away. So I need to copy this distance two more times. So here's another time. So now this would be a scale factor of two. We need to go one more to get a scale factor of three. And then I'm going to mark that point as C prime. Then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it to D. So we're going to measure from O to D. Again, mark an arc, and then you're going to copy that distance three times. So now you've copied, you have three equal sections here. So this is going to be D prime. And then your final result here will be drawing a line going through C prime and D prime. And remember, we'll, we want it to go past C prime, D prime, because we're, we're doing a dilation of a line, so it's still going to stay a line. So I need to make sure that I put arrows on the end. And again, that distance from C to D when you look at C prime, D prime, that got three times as big, but lines go on forever, so that you still get out a line, and these lines are parallel to each other. So now let's look at how to do dilations on the coordinate plane. So let's go to the next page. So you won't need your compass anymore, or your straight edge you're still going to want because you're going to be drawing lines, but your compass you don't need. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at dilations of lines that are centered at the origin. So for all of these, they're going to be centered at the origin. And remember, when we do a dilation, the lines are going to remain parallel. So after a dilation, the lines remain parallel. So that's an important idea here. So if we have parallel lines, that means we're going to have the same slope. So that's going to actually help us a lot when we go to do these dilations on a coordinate plane. Because if you're doing a dilation on a coordinate plane, you need to know the slope. So when I look at this first example, the line y equals 2x plus 1 is dilated by a scale factor of 3, and it's centered at the origin. What is the equation? of the line after the dilation. Well, if I'm trying to find the equation of a line, that means in the end, I got to have an answer in y equals mx plus b form. So I have to know the slope and I have to know the y-intercept of this new line. That's what I'm trying to answer here. So first thing is I know what the slope is right away. I know that the slope of this new line is going to have to equal whatever the slope of this line is. So if the slope of this line is 2, well, my new line has to have a slope of 2 because the lines are parallel. So they have the same slope. So the next part is going to be, though, how am I going to find the y-intercept? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your graph for this. It'll just make it easier, especially when you get to ones where the center is not at the origin. So I'm going to start off with graphing my original line. So let's go ahead and do that. So to graph the original line here, you have a slope of 2. So it's going to be up to right 1. And you're going to start at 
1. So that's going to be our starting point. We're going to start at 1, then we're going to rise up to right 1, up to right 1, up to right 1, and continue that pattern. And then you're going to backtrack, go the opposite way. And then we'll go ahead and connect the line here. So use your straight edge for that. Oops, I'm going to change this color. And then make sure we put our arrows on there. So this is our original, y equals 2x plus 1. And then the next thing is I want to look at the center. So the center of dilation is at the origin. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. And I'm going to do a dilation of a scale factor of 3. So remember, that means that the distance from the center is going to be 3 times the distance as from the center to one of the pre-image points right now. So like I said, when you're doing a dilation of a line, you really need two key points if it's in plane space because in order to draw a line you have to have two points to connect. If I'm on a graph I really only need to find one point because I already know the slope and when you know the slope then from that one point you can just count to get other points you know rise over run once you know the one point. So in order to find that first point what I'm going to do is I'm going to count that distance. So you're going to count from the center to any point. So I'm going to just make a note of that. So triple distance from the center to one point on the original line. And that'll get you to your new line. So if you had to pick one point, and if it's centered at the origin, your one point that you should pick that'll make it easiest is to pick the y-intercept. Because if I'm on the center and I'm, and I'm just counting vertical distance here to get to the old y-intercept, if I triple it, it'll get me to the new y-intercept. So if I choose this to get from the center to this old y-intercept is 1, so instead of going up 1, I'm going to have to go up three because I have to triple that distance. So from the center I'm going to rise one, two, three. So this distance right here got three times as big to get to the new line. So now once I have that new point, which is my y-intercept, if I want to actually graph the rest of this line, I just use the slope two over one. So then I would just go, because the lines are parallel, I would go up two over one up two over one. The lines have to have the same slope if they're parallel. Then you go down to left one, down to left one, and so on. And then you get enough points you can actually connect the line. And you'll see, okay, well your lines are parallel, but the distance from the old line to the new line is now three times the distance away from the center as the old line was. So I'm going to draw my arrows. And to actually answer this question, you have to write the equation of your new dilated line. Well, I know that the slope is going to be the same, y equals, so it's going to be 2x, and then the new y-intercept is the first point I found, so really did I have to draw the line? No, it didn't ask me to, it just asked me to find the equation but sometimes it'll ask you to, so that's why I just went ahead and did it. Um, but if you look at your equation here, your new graph, your y-intercept is 3, and that's the first point we found. So right away, I know that my equation of the dilated line is y equals 2x plus 3. So same slope, and then I just counted the distance to get to the new y-intercept. So let's try some more, and you're going to see that we don't always have to do the full graph here, especially when the question's only asking for what is the equation. So let's try some other examples where we'll kind of shorten up some of the work.
so example two, we start with our line. So let's go ahead and you always want to graph that original though. So let's graph that. So that means I'm starting down at negative four. So one, two, three, four. And my slope is two over one. So we're going to go up to right one, up to right one. Repeat that process. And then backtrack. Connect your line here. And then make sure you have arrows on the line and label it so that you know that this is the original. And now we have a scale factor of 3 over 2 and it's centered at the origin. So let's mark our center as at the origin. And a scale factor of three over two is really one and a half, because three over two is really 1.5. So that distance, we're, only, we're gonna go one and a half times this distance here. So when we count to find our new equation, the first thing I know for this new equation is the slope is gonna be the same. So when I come up with this equation, of my dilated line, I know right away it's going to have a slope of 2. So it's got to have the same slope because the lines are going to be parallel. So then what I have to find is the y-intercept. So that's what I'm looking for right now. So we have to basically find this distance and then we have to multiply it by 3 over 2. So right now to travel from the center down to the y-intercept, because remember we care about one point, one, two, three, four. We have to go down four. So then to get the new distance, you're going to have to multiply four by three over two is what we're going to have to do. So the new distance multiply, so do four times three over two. This you might want to do in your calculator if you're not sure on how to multiply fractions. So Essentially what you do though is this is like 4 over 1, so multiply the top, you get 12, multiply the bottom, you get 2, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So this means I'm going to go down 6. So to get to my new point, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's my new y-intercept. So my new y-intercept is going to be negative 6. And then from there, remember, you can go ahead and you can finish up the line and you can count from your y-intercept up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, because you know what the slope is. It's supposed to be parallel. But this question is just saying, what is the equation? So what is the equation? Well, I already have the slope is 2, y-intercept 6, or negative 6, so I'm going to write y equals 2x minus 6, and we're done. So the graph is really just to help you count, unless it tells you that you have to graph both, then you would actually have to finish up the graph of your line. So that's it for that. That's really all you need to show is how do you get to this equation. So let's look at the next one. This one we're starting with the line y equals 2x. So this really is the same thing as saying y equals 2x plus 0. So your y-intercept is going to be at 0. So you're going to start at 0. Your slope is 2 again, so up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and continue that, and then backtrack. When I'm drawing these lines, I'm really going across the entire graph. Use that entire space when you do this. So connect, and we'll put arrows on. And then we want to label it so that we know what we're looking at. So this is y equals 2x. And then we want to dilate this with a scale factor of 4. So that distance is going to get 4 times. And this one's centered at the origin. So the difference between this question and the other two is this time my center of dilation is on the line. So basically, if you're trying to move from this center to a point on the line, well you're already on the line, so there's no distance to travel, which means when you go to do the dilation, there's no distance to travel to multiply it by 4. You didn't go up or over any to get from this point to the old y-intercept. So that tells me that my new line is going to stay right here. This is the new line. So when you do a dilation of a line where the center is on the line, your dilation will be 
the old line because the slope's going to be the same. And since you're not traveling from the center, any way to get to that point is just going to stay right here. So this is the answer. So the time when you have a center of dilation on the line, your dilation will just be that line. Only because the line goes on forever. So the old line and the new line both go on forever. It's the same line. Um, even if you wanted to count, well, what did I have to do to get from this center to a different point on the line? Well, if you count up and over, so I had to go up 2 over 1 to get from the center to this old point. If I multiply that by 4, so instead of up 2, I would be going up 8, so up 2, 4, 6, 8, and then instead of going over 1, I'd be going over 4. You still end up with a point on the line as your new point after the dilation, and then from here, you'd have to backtrack the slope to get to the y-intercept, which is the same equation. So whenever you start with that center on the line, it's just going to be the same line. So that's just to show you that kind of example. So that's like the exception to the rule. Otherwise, you'll always end up with two parallel lines if your center's not on the line. So that's a good conclusion to write. So let's actually add that down here. So if the center of dilation is on the lines, so we have two things here. So if the center of dilation is on the line, then you get the same line. After the dilation and then the second thing here is if the center of dilation is not on the line then you get two parallel lines then the lines are parallel And that was our two situations. So this was example one and example two. We got two parallel lines. Example three, we got the same line after the dilation. So let's look at some examples where the center is not at the origin. So let's see how that changes some things up. So the last page here that we're going to look at is when your um, center is not at the origin. So we're going to start with the same equation that we saw earlier. So starting up at one. You're going to go up 2 over 1 for your slope, backtrack, connect here, put your arrows on, label, all of those things. So we have y equals 2x plus 1. And then I have a scale factor of 2, and it's centered at negative 1, 3. So let me mark negative 1, 3, and we're going to write center by it so that we know that's where we're measuring from. You could just write C if you want for center. And we know that we're trying to find the equation. So we don't have to draw the new line. It just wants the equation of the new line. So right away, when I'm looking for the equation, remember we need y in y equals mx plus b form. So I know that the slope is going to be the same. So we know that we have to have the same slope. So it's going to be y equals 2x. And we have to find the y-intercept. So when you're doing these, it's going to be a little bit different. Since you're not starting at the origin, you're not going to just count up or down to get to the y-intercept. So you're going to have to count up and over, which isn't necessarily going to give you the new y-intercept when you double that distance or triple that distance. So let me show you what I mean. We'll still be able to find it, but it's just an extra step. So if I'm looking at this new equation, I pick a point that I want to count to on the old line. So let's say I use the y-intercept. You can always stick with just using a y-intercept. 
but really you can pick any point on the old line and you're just doubling that distance just like what you did when you had a triangle you used all three points and you doubled the distances in this case you have many points that you can pick you only need to worry about one though so I'm going to pick any point I want I'm going to use a y-intercept and I look at that distance so I had to travel down to down to and then right one to get to that point. So that means I need to double that distance. So instead of going down to right one, I need to go down four, right two to get to my new point. So I'm going to go down one, two, three, four over two, one, two. Now, if you really wanted to, you could have just said, okay, double the distance. Well, down two over one, do it again, down two over one, you double the distance. So that means this point right here is a point on my new line. So this really turns into one of those problems from unit one where you need to write an equation that passes through this point right here, one, negative one. And it has to be parallel to this line because we know that dilated lines are always parallel to the original line as long as the center is not on the original line. So you need a line that goes through this point parallel to this. So there's two ways for you to write this equation. You can do an algebraic way to find the y-intercept, or you could do a graphic, graphical way to find the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept graphically, I'm going to start at this line, and I'm going to count the slope. My slope has to be 2 over 1 because it has to be parallel to this other line in blue. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and I'm getting my new line, but remember, I need to know the y-intercept. So that means I need to backtrack until I cross the y-axis, which in this case, I just crossed at 1, 2, 3. B equals negative 3. So that means my equation is y equals 2x minus 3. So that becomes a problem from unit 1 once you get to this point. Now, what if you try to cross and it crosses at a decimal, and it doesn't cross at a nice integer value? What that tells you is that you should do it algebraically. So if I want to find the y-intercept algebraically, let me just show you how you would do it. You would take y equals mx plus b, and you need to plug in two things. Plug in the slope, and your point, which in this case, if the point was 1, negative 1, that the line has to pass through, and your slope was 2. So you would plug these two things into this. So this is the x, this is the y, so I have negative 1 equals 2 times 1 plus b, and then you solve it for b. So negative 1 equals 2 plus b, subtract 2 from both sides, you get negative 3 equals b. So I found it over here graphically by counting, but if it was a decimal or a fraction and it didn't work out as a nice integer value, you would have to go through it algebraically and do it this way here. Um, so that's it. You don't have to actually finish drawing the line. It doesn't say that you have to, but you do see that your green line is parallel to the blue line, which tells me that I've done it correctly since the center of dilation was not on the original line. Also, that distance away from the center to the new line, every point is twice the distance as the center from the old line, from every point on the old line. So let's look at one last example here. So for this one, same thing. Um, the center of dilation is supposed to be point T, so let's just write that. That should have been given to you. So center of dilation equals T, which is 8 comma 1. So we're going to use that. And our first thing is already our line's already drawn, so that's nice. The problem with our line already being drawn is they don't give us the equation, so they don't give us the slope. It's not in y equals mx plus b form. So that means you're going to have to find that slope. So we know that our scale factor for the dilation is one-third, which tells me my new line is actually going to get closer to point t since it's a reduction. So in order to come up with our equation, remember we need two things. We need to know the slope and we need to know the y-intercept. So these two things is what we're looking for. So first let's find the slope of the old line because that'll tell me what the slope of my new line has to be. So the easiest way to find the slope would be probably to count it out on a graph or use the slope formula. So if I'm trying to find the slope of this line, 
I just have to ask myself, how did I go from C to D? Well, I went down one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I went over one, two, three, four, five, six. So we went, so this is going to be the slope of CD. We went down six, right six. So it was negative six since we went down over six, which gives me negative one. So that tells me the slope of my new line, which I'm going to call C prime D prime, is going to be negative one because the lines are parallel. And from there, now we need to actually look at the dilation. We need to figure out, well, where's our y-intercept going to be? So my y-intercept, I'm going to use the center, and I'm going to count to any point on this line, and I'm going to do a third of that. So I'm going to just use, I'm going to go from T to D here. So to go from T to D, we had to go left, one, two, three, four, five, six, left six, and then we had to go up one, two, three. So that means if you're going to do a third of that, that's like dividing by three. So a third of six would be left two. A third of three would be up one. So that tells me to get to my new point, I'm going to have to go left two, up one. So my new point is right here, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, six comma two. So the point that your line has to pass through is 6, 2, and it has to be parallel to negative 1. So again, it becomes a unit 1 problem. It must pass through this point, and it must be parallel to the old equation, which in this case, the old line has the slope of negative 1. So a couple ways you can do it. You can do it by graphing and counting and hoping that you don't get a decimal. Otherwise, you have to do it algebraically. So if I count this graphically, it means I have to go down one, right one, down one, right one, and then you're going to backtrack to get the old y-intercept. So when you go backwards, you see that you get a new y-intercept of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So your new y-intercept is going to be 8. So B equals 8. So again, you could do it algebraically, plug in your, this slope, plug in 6 comma 2, plug it in to y equals mx plus b and solve for b. Otherwise, you count and you get a nice integer value. So when we go to write our equation, we use these two things. We're going to use our slope. We're going to use our y-intercept. So we have y equals negative 1x, but really you could just write that as negative x. You don't need the 1, plus 8. And that's it. So there's your equation of your new line. And again, it got closer to the center of dilation because it was a reduction. Still parallel, but closer to the center. And that's it then for today.